So let's talk about the program element. Okay, so okay, this is an example for simple calculation program by using Python language. Okay, so you can pause this video for a while and then you need to type this in your Python programming. Okay, then I will explain every single one of it to you. So let me open the coding for you to take a look. Okay, so you can open the coding as usual. You can open a new file like this. You come out with untitled one if you haven't opened any file on file. So you can type it and then you will come out with this. So, okay, so let me open this wider. Okay, so this is a program to make a simple calculation and then you have import OS. Okay, print additional calculator of two numbers. Okay, then you have print this and then number one equal to float which is floating type input enter first number and then number two is float input enter second number which both these are asking the uh, input from the user okay and then sum equal to number one plus number two and then print and then number one means it will call out the number one plus number two equal to sum from the calculations and then all as system pause so i will explain this later to you okay so you can Pause this video for a while and then you can try to type. So once you run, finish, when you, once you type finish, and then you, have, you can try to run. Okay, so you can see that this is the debug in and output. Okay, so here you can see that enter first number. So enter first number, let's say I enter 2. And enter second number, let's say I enter 3. Okay, so it will come out like 2.0 plus 3.0 equal to 5.0. And then they will ask you press any key to continue. Okay. So what is the post, uh, the import OS and the OS system here is let you to hold on the screen. Okay. So if you, let's say you open the file directly from the program. Okay. It's not from the Python. Okay. So let me open to you and take a look. So if you open the file directly, it will show you this black screen. So let's say you enter 2 and then under 3, okay, so it will show you 2.0 plus 3.0 equal to 5.0. And then let you press any key to continue, let's say after 3, so it will close. And if you don't have that OS, when you open, once you finish calculate, it will not hold on the screen. So let's say I open a, open another thing, so let's say I open other things, okay, it will not show you. Once you finish, you will close it. So you need to have this import OS. And also the os.system pause to let the screen hold on okay to pause the screen so let me explain to you the components okay so you can see that okay so for this anything type after hash okay this is hash okay the pound sign so this program is to make a simple calculator uh, uh, everything you type after this is comments so it will not affect your program okay and then this is this is the display prompt Okay, and then this is gather the input prompt. Okay, when you get the input, and then this is a process statement sum equal to number one plus number two. Display the output from this print. Okay, and then other than that, the print object. Okay, so let me show you what is the print object. Okay, so you can see that this produce multiple lines of output. Okay, so when you type this print, I am I am man. So Will you show you like print I am Iron Man? Okay, so let us try. So I will show you this. Okay, so let's say you type at a new one. So you put print I am I, I am Iron Man. Okay, so I am Iron Man. If I'm too fast, so you can pause the video and then you can, okay, so you can do it. You can save the file. Okay, select, save, I am man. So you run, you see, you will become two line. Okay, so each print, it will show you I am man. Okay. Okay, so you see, you give you two lines. Okay. So, if you want to type it in only one line and produce the same item as just now, okay, you need to use slash n, okay. 
So another way of producing multi-line text. So you don't need to type two types of print. Let me show you. Okay. So I already pre-typed it. So this is it. Okay. So let me run. Okay. It will show you here. I N I M N, and next line. Slash N stand for next line. So you can try this also. Okay. Nothing wrong if you do this or you type uh, another line, another print. Okay. It's both for you. But then if you type like this in the same line, you type print I M and then print I M N. If you do like this, it will show you in the same line. It will not become next line. So let me show you also to prove it. Okay. So you can see that. Let's say I bring this to here. Okay. And then I run. Okay. It will show you the arrows. Syntax arrows. Let me try. What is the wrong thing? Okay. It will not show you. Syntax error. Invalid syntax. So you cannot do that. Okay. So you need to do. Okay. You need to do like this. So this one it will not work this, it will give you the arrows. So don't do this. Okay, I think it changed it. And then the output objects. So let's say you want to do this. You print high, it will show you high. But then you want to print high dash, you want to have a dash here. Okay, you need to have a dash and then sub. But then you want to type like this. How can you do that? Okay? So you want to put this and this merge together. Okay? So if you want to have this and then but then you want it to be combined, you need to use E N D equal to. Okay, and then you do this. So let me show you the example. Okay, the three output. So let me run this. This one I already add out something else, so you can see that. Okay. So let me open it. You get control C, control plus. So you become your hi. Hey sub. So here is this. Okay. And then if I didn't type anything here, it will show you makan belum at next line. So let's say you have another thing here, E-N-D equal to what is going to happen. So let's try. Expect what is the answer. So you see, the makan belum will go back to here. Because you will end, okay? Because the E-N-D equal to, e equal to here is either mandatory but can be useful to prevent Python from adding the extra line. So if you don't want the extra line, you can do this. Okay, you can use E and D equal to. So let me go continue. Okay, so you can do this also. Enclosing the value in bracket with quotes uh, qu means the value in between the quotes will be literal, literally displayed on screen. Excluding the quotes will display the content of a memory locations. So you can see the example as string equal to some message. So print as string. So you will print this some message. But then we will print a string. You put the quotation mark here, so you will pin this as the output instead of this some message. Okay, so let me run the example for you. Okay, so I already type it here. Okay, same thing in the in the slide. Okay, so you can see that when you run, you show you the first, you show you some message. Okay, but then print a string means that it is not taking this, but it is taking this as the output. Okay. So remember, and then you need to know what is going to be the output. Okay, so you can see that the print arg1 arg2 here. You see, number equal to ten, names equal to gen, and then you print sub, and then you print the quotation mark number equal to. When you have the quotation mark, means it will print out this thing. It will show you the display of this. It will not call the number equal to ten at here. It will not call the ten. And then end equal to. It will means there will no extra line. And then print number. So number, you will hear there's no quotation mark, right? So it will call this variable, okay, 10. That's why your number equal to 10. It show this number will show this. This n will avoid the uh, extra line. And then number is from this 10.0, okay? And then you print this. When you print a bracket like this, you show use that you will print an empty line. And then print my name is, okay? Then you put the name, the gems. So the names here, you will call the name from here this gem. So that's why it's my name is gem. Okay. So let me show you the coding. Okay. So you can see that this is it. So I will run it. Okay. So you can see that hi. Okay. Number equal to 10. Names is gem. Hi. Number. Okay. Oh, 
sorry, I edited it a bit. So number. So here is number. Okay. So let me run. It is showing some errors. Oh, look. I have a typing. Wait a minute. Okay. So it will show you number. Okay, equal to 10. Here I forgot to put equal to. Okay. So, but then here there is no single spacing because I haven't put print. Okay, empty. So let me run again. Okay, you can see that. Now you have a single line here. So you can try this also by yourself. Okay, so next move on next slide. Okay, so variables and literals variables. So variables has a storage correct uh, location in memory and has a name and a type of data it can hold. So Python allows programmers to use variables without declaring it. So you can directly assign it, initialize any value on into those variables, automatically select the appropriate type according to the values. Means that this is a variable, and then you can assign the number for it. So number 1 equal to 10. Means you assign 10 for this variable. Okay? And then variables and literals variables. Okay, so for the program, just now you type, okay, the program at the beginning of this course. So this program calculates the additional of two numbers. So you put number one, you now you want to declare the number, but you want to ask from the user. So you declare it as floating number, and then you ask the user to key in. So the number that user key in will become the number one. Okay? So variables and literals. Okay, but literals is a value that written in a program code. So that's now is the number, right? Okay. So now this is the lit, uh, string literal. With anything inside the quotation mark, okay. So this is the string literal. If you put number 12 inside this string literal, uh, the string literal, then it will become string. And then if you put this without the quotation mark here, here is the number. This is an integer. If you put the floating number, it will become the floating number integer. A floating number point. Okay. So variables and literal. So let's say here you assign green apple equal to 15. Means the amount of green apple is 15. And then you print total number of green apple is 15. You will call 15 here because you print this as the string literal and then this is the number that you will call. Okay. So this is string literal. Okay. And then identifiers. As I said, the number in the previous video before, the keywords this, this is a keywords and then you cannot use keywords for other purpose. So this, all the keywords, you cannot use it as the identifier. Okay. So a variable name should be represent the purpose of the variable. For example, items ordered. Okay. So this one for you, you directly after you read this, you know, this is to represent the ordered items. Okay. And then the rules for identifiers. Okay. The first character must be ident uh, the, of an identifier must be an alphabetic character. Which means it must be A, B, C to Z. Either one. Okay. And underscore. Okay. Either underscore or this. Number cannot. Any other symbol cannot. After the first character, you may use alphabetic numbers, uh, characters, number, or underscore. So after the first character, you can put number. One, two, three. Okay. And so on. Upper and lower case are distinct. Means that if your variable is using capital letter, the upper low, upper case, means that if lower case has upper case, it will be different. Okay. So this is a rule. You can see that it will start from the, okay. It cannot start from number. It can start from underscore. Okay, and then remaining later, it can use letter or numbers and underscore, but no symbols. Okay, and then should not be made of any reserve word, and then may not be content space. No spacing allowed. If you did put spacing as accidentally, it will give you errors. And name are sensitive case, means that the total cells for the uppercase for this and lowercase this is totally different.